Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study about pregabalin. We will see the mechanism of action, indications, doses and side effect. Let us now start with the mechanism of action. As we can see in the pregabalin, there is GABA is written in the name. And uh, often we think that it has something to do with the GABA receptor. But actually, it has nothing to do with the GABA receptor. It is structurally similar to GABA and that's why it is called as pregabalin. But it does not act on GABA receptors. So now let us see what's the actual mechanism of action of this drug. So it acts on presynaptic ion channels that is calcium channel. And uh, by acting on calcium channel, it inhibits the neurotransmitter release. Neurotransmitters like glutamate, substance P, dopamine and norepinephrine. The release of this neurotransmitter is inhibited by pregabalin. So overall, it inhibits the neuronal excitation. So now let us try to understand what does exactly happens. So here you can see presynaptic neurons and postsynaptic neurons. There are these vesicles in the presynaptic neurons which contain neurotransmitters. There is also this voltage gated calcium channel in the presynaptic neurons. And on the postsynaptic side, there are this NMDA receptor and AMPA receptor which are basically receptor for glutamate. So what actually happens is whenever a impulse comes, it depolarizes this presynaptic neuron and it uh, opens these voltage gated calcium channels. So when, when the calcium enters the presynaptic neurons, the calcium is basically important for release of this uh, neurotransmitter via this vesic vesicle in the synaptic cleft. Then this is, uh, neurotransmitter go and act on uh, the postsynaptic uh, receptor like AMPA and NMDA and causes postsynaptic excitation. And this is how a neurotransmission is done. So there is basically a site called as alpha to delta site on this voltage gated calcium channel. And this site actually modulates the entry of calcium into the presynaptic vesicle. The pregabalin actually acts on this site and inhibits it. And therefore, the entry of calcium into the presynaptic neurons is inhibited. And by doing this, the pregabalin uh, inhibits the neurotransmission. And this action of pregabalin can be used for certain conditions like neuropathic pain, fibromyalgia, post herpetic neuralgia, and focal seizures. The doses for, for pregabalin in this situation are uh, for neuropathic pain, we use 150 mg per day. It can be increased to uh, 300 mg per day. For fibromyalgia, it is used uh, at, at a dose of initial dose of 150 mg per day and can be increased to 300 or 450. For post herpetic neuralgia, it is initiated at a dose of 150 mg per day and can be increased to 300 and then 600. For focal seizures, the, it is uh, actually used in children more than 4 years of age, not below that. And uh, for the body, body weight of 11 to 30 kg, it is used at a dose of 3.5 mg per kg. Above 30 kg, it is used at a dose of 2.5 mg per kg. And in adult, it is used at a dose of 150 mg per day. Now, there are certain side effects of this drug. It basically acts on nerves and there are some CNS side effects like drowsiness, dizziness and somnolence. Other side effects are dry mouth, constipation and headache. There can also occur hypersensitive reactions and can cause skin rashes. Uh, the important side effect on long term use of the pregabalin is weight gain. And also uh, in initial days, uh, once we start pregabalin, uh, blood vision can also be seen. Now we have already discussed the dose for individual conditions. But uh, here are some preparations in which uh, uh, pregabalin is available. It is available in capsule form which uh, comes uh, from two, uh, 25 mg to 300 mg capsule. It is also available in solution form that is uh, 20 mg per ml and it is also available as controlled release uh, tablets uh, at a dose of 82.5 mg, 165 mg and 330 mg. One important thing, uh, it has no relation with the food intake that is it can be taken with food or can be taken without food. There is no such restriction for this drug. Now, some points for clinical importance, uh, it has to be used with caution in patient with heart failure as this drug can cause peripheral edema and can increase the work of load of the heart. 
and in some in any patient with uh, known hypersensitivity it should be used with caution as uh, it can cause angioedema and also angioedema is a very common side effect of ace inhibitors so it should be used with caution in such patient in those patient who are uh, on ace inhibitor now as i already told you on long term use it can cause weight gain so the weight has to be monitored on its use the drug is excreted in urine unchanged so in a patient with renal failure the doses has to be reduced one more thing it should not be discontinued suddenly because it can induce seizure so it it has to be tapered down uh, in weeks before stopping some points which can be asked as mcq are it can increase creatinine kinase and it can cause myopathy so this all this has to be kept in mind so that was it for the video guys uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please do subscribe to uh, get more such videos thank you